Hey, Space Timers. Two weeks ago, we issued a challenge question. Which of two particles, one orbiting around the outside of a planet and one going straight through the middle, reaches the other side first? There was a Newtonian and an Einsteinian version of the challenge. Let's start with the answer to the Newtonian version. The key to the Newtonian challenge was getting an expression for the gravitational force on the particle that's falling through the planet when it's a distance r from the center of the planet. As it turns out, if you use the hints that I gave in the original video, it works out to be proportional to that distance. Now, there's another force that comes up in elementary physics that's also proportional to the distance of a particle from an equilibrium point, namely the force that a spring exerts on a block. Now, in the case of a block on a spring, you can work out an expression based on those proportionality constants for how much time it takes to do a complete oscillation. Now, by drawing a formal algebraic analogy between the gravitational equation on the one hand and the spring equation on the other, you can find analogous quantities and figure out an expression for the period of oscillation of a particle falling through a planet, namely how much time it takes to go and come back. Cut that in half, and you know how much time it takes to reach the other side. Now, independent from what I just said, you can also work out an expression for the orbital period of a particle moving under the planet's gravity in a circular orbit right at the surface. If you compare that expression to the expression that you get for the oscillatory period of a particle going through the center, you find that algebraically, they're identical. This is kind of a coincidence of the specific situation of a uniformly dense planet in Newtonian mechanics. But nonetheless, it means that the half periods are also the same, and it turns out that the particles tie. Now, the only reason I know that's the answer is that I actually did out the algebra. A lot of you tried to submit answers that had some verbal intuitive explanation, but none of them really held water. You have to do the algebra in this case because this is very specific to the situation of a uniformly dense planet. Change the density profile even a little bit, and the answer changes. So you can see a complete algebraic solution and I encourage you to look at it by going down to this link, which is also down in the description. But a lot of you did submit algebraically correct, complete solutions, from which we selected five randomly to win a t-shirt. So if you see your name passing by on the screen below, you're one of our five winners, congratulations. Please send an email to pbsspacetime at gmail.com that has your full name, your full mailing address, and your preferred t-shirt size in American sizing, small, medium, large, extra large, like that. We'll send one out to you as soon as we can. Good work and congratulations to everyone who submitted a correct response. For the Einsteinian challenge, we had fewer than five people submit correct responses. Your names are scrolling down below. Congratulations, send us an email with your specifications and we'll get you your prize. Now, explaining the answer to the Einsteinian challenge is a bit more involved because you don't know the geometry from the outset. You have to... What was that? Yeah, I am your replacement. Matt O'Dowd, is that you? Yeah, it's me. Oh, so you're the new host of Space Time. Yeah, but why did they give me all this? It's to see if you're ready. Question one. In 15 billion years, what will you find at the center of the solar system? Well, assuming the collision with Andromeda doesn't disrupt our planetary system, it'll be a white dwarf remnant after the sun ejects its outer layers as a planetary nebula. Question two. Which quasar is the most distant object ever observed? Trick question. It's not a quasar at all. It's a gravitationally lensed proto-galaxy. Wait, really? I didn't know that. Question three. What's the answer to the Einsteinian version of the two-particle challenge question? Have you even worked that out yet? Actually, no. I haven't done it yet, but I could use some help. Let's go to the whiteboard. You need a marker? No, go on. Awesome. So here's where I am so far. You start with the general spherical symmetric metric and the effective potential formulation for radio geodesic. And then from there, Okay, so we evaluate these integrals, see which one's bigger, and that tells us who wins the race. I think that's it. So who ends up winning the race? Well, the answer to that question, along with all the math that we use to figure it out, can be accessed at this document with this link that we also have down in the description. Why aren't we just telling you the answer on the air? Well, I think it's really important that you actually go and look at the math. You know, physical intuition is incredibly important and you can go a really long way verbally talking through a physics problem. But in the end, sometimes you just gotta do the math. And that's doubly true in general relativity, where the ground is always shifting under your feet. In every problem, the rules of geometry change. You don't know how clocks work, and you pretty much have to start from scratch. 
There's just no way around it. Some of you might be daunted by the general relativity solution. But remember, the Newtonian solution is also there, and it's a really good idea just to look at the algebra, at least to see how this process goes. I couldn't agree more. Guys, it's time for me to go. I've had a great run here, but you're in good hands with Matt. These are the space timers, space timers. This is Matt O'Dowd, and it's unfortunately time for me to go. I'm really excited to be taking over this show. We're gonna be doing some extremely cool topics with the same rigor and intensity that you've been used to. And as a bonus, I talk slower than Gabe. So I'll see you guys in a couple of weeks for a fresh episode of Space Time. Thank <laughs> you.